Welcome to another episode of the hashtag Proud to be LBUSD podcast. I'm your host, Shelby, and today we have Enrique Brito, a local muralist, as our guest today. We'll be learning about his journey as an artist, along with the exciting project he's currently working on at Poly High School. Thank you for coming in today and welcome. Thank you for inviting me, Jenny. I'm really glad to have you. So can we start off by having you tell us how you got into art in the first place? Um, when I first came here to USA, I'm, I, I'm originally from Mexico. I was born there and uh, I, one of my friends invited me to uh, participate in this huge mural that we're uh, painting in, in Hollywood. Uh, so they, this, the, they gave me like uh, six by eight space up in the air on the scuffle. Uh, and there was like a, only the drawing of this satellite. There was like a, some kind of space mm-hmm. theme. So they gave me that space to do the satellite and, and around the, the satellite. And it was so excited. I, um, the feeling of the of the colors, you know, degrading the colors, uh, looking at the uh, painting, the light and the shadow. It was so much fun. So I said, oh, my goodness, I experienced this before. So and so I decided to start taking uh, art classes. Wow. And before you had come to work on that first mural, did you paint as a kid or how did you get into painting before that experience? I grew up in Morelos, um, a small uh, village, maybe like 30 houses, 150 people there. Wow. And we had this huge area where we had a river, mountains, and we had goats. So when I was five years old, they, they sent me to take care of the goats. I used to follow them around, they walked too fast. But the one year, the, the, the forest burned, so there was nothing for the goats to eat. So I gathered charcoal and leaves from trees and stuff like that. So while the, the goats were like drinking water near the river, I used to draw uh, like um, leaves and stuff, green stuff for the, wow. for, for, the, for, the, uh, for the goats to eat, but obviously they didn't need it. But that was just my, my intention. Mm-hmm. So I discovered that at that point I discovered that art has, it's like a language that has, that has a meaning. Uh, so um, what I did, because I, I draw like trees and clouds and the goats and the mountain. Mm-hmm. So by doing that, I discovered that everything is connected. The rain that fell from the sky into the mountain, the green stuff, the leaves, the trees, and the goats and the other animals that eat that depends from nature. So I, at young, a young age, I discovered that connection through art, and it's like, oh my goodness, this is meaningful. Yeah. So I was very shocked. So when I came here later on, and I, I, I kind of like that, that message was like awakened again when I start painting. I say, oh my goodness, there's gotta be something that I have to tell the world about with art. Right. That's awesome. I loved hearing that story and. Talking about the art that you made back then and how you still make murals now, is it changed at all? What type of art do you make now? What subject matter do you paint? Well, I start by drawing like abstract stuff on rocks. And then uh, when I start taking classes, obviously it was like charcoal, exploring all the mediums, like charcoal, ink on paper, on canvas, acrylic, oils, photography, all the mediums I explore. Uh, yeah, um, one some of the mediums that I like the most is photography and painting because they're more practical. Mm-hmm. But I also do a sculpture. Right. Yeah. And on the murals that you've made recently, have you taken any inspiration from things? Like, what are your favorite things to paint? Uh, mostly nature. I did the art day in uh, Orange County for for many years, over ten years. Uh, I gather groups from. Uh, from uh, from other countries and from other counties, from San Diego, from uh, Ventura, um, and uh, we all celebrate Earth Day. Then I was the director, so wow. I'm very attached to nature because uh, where I grew up, the river, the animals. Right. Yeah. So so I I I inspire others to uh, to do art, but I mostly connect it to nature. Yeah, that's awesome to hear how like you're childhood has led you to what you paint now and that's awesome to hear um that you still like to paint those things and engage with that and obviously you've been doing this for a long time but throughout the years would you say that your style has changed or evolved and like what would you say is your art style you said you liked photography um 
practical? Do you do any abstract work? Or what would you call your art style? My, I, my art style has changed through the years. Um, mostly we're trained in the academy as a, a, a you know, like we start like uh, doing like, a, like something realistic and then going in through uh, um, like uh, with these new modern styles like Impressionism, Cubism, mm -hmm. Fauvism, Dadism, all these new styles that came out. But I, I was um, attached for uh, Impressionism for a while. I did a lot of landscaping in Orange County, the mountains, the uh, Kern River. Mm -hmm. and I did a lot, of, a lot of California landscaping. Uh, but I kind of like, I saw that a lot of people were doing it. So I say, I got to look into in, right deep inside myself. I want to find out what, what that I really want to do with art. So these new approaches are, are driving me to evolve. Mm -hmm. And my art has evolved uh, quite a bit. And um, now I paint more like uh, abstract, uh, sub-realism. Mm. Uh, it's a process that, that starts by combining everything and trying to uh, add new elements into painting and more like collages where you put like a, uh, like a stone on a painting or like a piece of cloth or uh, a feather and, and to come up with something new. Mm -hmm. It's not actually new, but something different. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, mm -hmm. I, I try a lot, a lot of, a lot of styles and um, I'm, I'm a Right now, I'm painting more like uh, surrealism, and uh, I kind of like uh, I want to paint. I stay there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool to hear that you've painted through so many different styles. And I've taken an art history class and learned about like how many different eras there were. And it's cool that you have that range that you can paint like all these different types, and that you were able to keep like your love for nature in the forefront of your mind during that. And like that's always been your subject. And Hearing how highly you talk about like what you love to do makes it obvious that you know you have a passion for this. So, I'm curious, like, what is the driving factor? Why do you make art? If you could name it, what do you take inspiration from now, and what keeps you motivated to keep uh, painting? Um, what drives me uh, to make art is um, it's just like the feeling of being alive. That something that no one's no one can tell you what to do. It's something uh, that comes from within and it has to come out. The way that I picture it is like uh, the universe wants to communicate something in, in, into, into this realm, into this, this uh, uh, dimension. Because uh, we got our energy from all around, from uh, the universe, and it wants to express itself. It's almost like God wants to talk through you, through your hands, through through your art. Wow! Uh, so it's a very uh, mystical experience. I would say more spiritual, more like a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's very addictive, and you you have to do it. There is a lot of obstacles in this plane, like money, like materials, but you gotta see you, yourself uh, as a as a creator that is driving humanity to a, new, to a new state of mind. Art is very essential for us because uh, art is like almost like science. They're, we're, it's like guiding us into, into, the, into the future. So it's very critical to, uh, to make art. And art is being used in, it's, I think the archi art archive is very is the most complete because we got uh, the paintings on the caves, mm -hmm. and then we have all these new movements of art. And I, I think this is the more complete archive that we have uh, in history. And um, I think art is, is essential for for us humans to um, to do it, so we can have uh, like. Like history, mm -hmm. like like uh, not re not written history, but visual history. Yeah, different a different kind of history. And the way you talk about it is so beautiful, and I can hear your emotions. You know, you're very connected to this. And you had mentioned earlier that you feel like art is a way to connect people. So I want to talk about um, the project you're working on at Poly High School right now. So 
I know you designed the mural that will be painted there, and you mentioned that you wanted the students to be involved in the process. So why was that important to you? I um, guess um, th it's going to be painted on a high school where, uh, where every, all these kids are learning. And I know some of them are going to become an artist in the future. So it, it's a way that it's a chance for them to, to, to learn about the process of, of making a mural. And another, um, another element is that they, they will have their own space so they can paint something of their own mm -hmm. without me doing any, any, without me disturbing their, their, um, their work. So I would just be there to guide them. And, and but for me, it's very important because it's, um, I'm, I'm kind of like passing on my experience for them. And uh, I'm gonna trust them and give them uh, the tools, and I'll be guide them, and I'll be happy to do that. I I done that a lot. I done like few murals with um, collective murals for uh, young people that that has like uh, problems and in, uh, in their environment where like they come together and five over a wall or they graffiti on or something. So what I do, I just call call that whoever the leaders. And uh, I, I gathered them and, and we talk about like sharing the space nicely and we paint a mural together, gathering ideas. And so they respect now the, the wall that they were like fighting over because they, they, they have their own ideas. Mm -hmm. And um, there's another project that I did with, uh, it's called Kids Museum of La Brea, mm -hmm. Two, 250 kids. I did a whole school, what it was called, uh, the Dreams of the Future. What we did was uh, we did the portraits of themselves, uh, like dreaming about how do they want, how they going to be in life. What we did with this little fair, we didn't buy leaders for the community, and we put a little booth for them, and then we brought all the kids, and the kids will ask them questions about, mm -hmm. a, a, let's say, a, a firefighter. What does it feel to be a firefighter? What are you? What do you do as a firefighter? And you have a lawyer and say, okay, what do you do as a lawyer? And stuff like that. So got the kids back and then I, I go there and I start working on uh, what would you like to be in the future? Did you talk, what do you talk to? Do you talk to the policeman? You talk to the firefighter? So what would you want to be in the future? And they would do the portrait of themselves. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, it and, seems, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I have a lot of experience uh, working with uh, with young people about about empower them then with the, with the, through the arts mm -hmm. to to uh, to become uh, more confident about themselves. I think art is a very empowerment tool uh, for people. Yeah, and to hear all the work that you've done with kids before, that's awesome. Like it makes me think that you're teaching them kind of not only about how to make art, but like how you feel about it and how to express your emotions. And I love that you said it can empower you. That's really awesome to hear and. The subject matter that we're doing the poly mural on about inclusivity is amazing too. And I want to ask, is this particular mural meaningful to you in any way about why it's being painted, about the fact that it's an inclusivity mural? Yeah, the, the, the idea about this mural came out with uh, um, Indira, the, Indira, Indira Jimenez found me uh, somewhere in, uh, in an activity in activity of uh, the community. And she asked me if I would uh, like to paint a mural. And I said yes, and she didn't have any idea about about a team or anything like that. There was no team, so I proposed the original proposal was uh, called Arbol de la Vida or the Tree of Life. My idea was uh, the steel connected to nature. I mm -hmm. say, look, this is the place where you teach young people to respect nature. Because everything that we're going through is because we have no respect for nature. Where we think you can just pollute the water, the air. You see it every day. They bombarding dust in the air, white dust, and we think we think it's clouds, but they are not. The water. Nobody cares about. Very few people care about the ocean. The the forests are burning. We have to be more sensitive about nature because we we kind of like the pain from nature. So we're gonna do this mural that is called the Tree of Light, and I. I do a little speech about it, and and they can they, we have the kids help us paint, so they can understand you know the role of nature, especially the role of a tree. And she was like, okay, I was a bit excited, and then she's like, wait a minute, you know what? We should uh, include uh, we should include this and that, and she so she showed me a lot of 
a lot of logos and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'll be happy to do that. So we're going to um, do my idea and her idea. And, and uh, the idea, so the, so the idea is going to start like growing, growing, growing. Mm-hmm. And then we had this, um, this mural that is called Inclusiveness and in, in the Tree of Life. And I really like the idea because uh, s- some of these um, young people uh, that need a special uh, uh, education, they're kind of like, uh, with, I think, this is of my point of view, they're kind of like being ignored by most of the people that we need to be more sensitive, you know, about what mm-hmm. they need. So um, I, I would say, okay, let's do it. So I started like, uh, I include a lot of the logos in the sketch and I present it and they like it. I say, oh yeah, yeah, it's very nice, let's do it. And uh, we're gonna coordinate with uh, with with uh, some of the, the uh, teachers that are gonna help. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're gonna bring the students out and I'll be there. And I assume that's gonna be during the day while they are at school. And I'm gonna guide them to paint. I'm gonna give them a little space where they're gonna be able to paint their own stuff. I won't interfere. And uh, Hopefully in the future they'll come back and they say this is what I paint like yeah. many years ago, if they are around, you know, and they mm-hmm. this, they gonna think this is their mural, not my mural. <laughs> so yeah. that's the idea. That's awesome, mm-hmm. and I didn't know that you know you pitched the idea and you so strongly like helped um, create the backbone of what it's going to be about, and that's awesome to hear that you're teaching them about, um, like you said, like the tree of life and how important that is to you, but also kindness to everybody and how you want to include them and how it's their mural also that's awesome to hear how collaborative it is and how meaningful it is to not only you but also to the community and yeah that was awesome to hear about I'm excited to see what it comes to be like and the next question I have for you is kind of from an artist perspective about art in general so from your personal opinion and from an artist perspective you'd mentioned this a little bit earlier how you felt connected emotionally to art and how it was a language, but what to you makes a piece of art good or what makes it stand out? Um, I think art, art is, is, is a language that communicates and it has to be a, a, an idea that makes sense, I suppose, to a certain movement or to a certain, uh, to reality. To reality, it has to, it has to represent reality somehow in in a movement or or or, or something, you know. Like uh, we got some pieces like uh, the scream, for instance, mm-hmm. and, and it's it's very shocking to see this this person on a on a bridge, yelling and with this um, very uh, modern looking, no? yeah, <laughs> almost like cartoonish, uh-huh. and uh, it has it's, it it, it wakes up a lot of emotion. And um, I think uh, art has the ability to do that. So a good piece would be something like that with a, with a nice colors, with a, with, with a really good message. And, uh, and it has to have quality and freshness. Just like when you go to the market, you, you, you go to buy a lettuce, you don't buy the, the, the old lettuce, you, go, mm-hmm. you buy something fresh. So an art has a, it has the same, it's, it's a term similar that's called freshness. It's fresh. you never seen something, such a thing, something like that before. And it's shocking when you see it, it's like, wow. <laughs> it has quality and, 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 and it's fresh and, and it's new. you never seen anything like that. So that would make a good piece on art. Yeah, and even, you know, you talking about that now, that's awesome to hear that what you had just said kind of relates to what you're doing at Poly. Like it is a new idea and that you guys come up, came up with it together about not only including the tree of life, but also the students and the values that they have. And that seems to me like a very fresh idea that I've never heard of before, which is cool to hear, you know, this is going to be an awesome piece of art that you're making. And, um, as we kind of wrap up, uh, tapping back into the thought that, you know, you're working with these kids and you said maybe you can inspire some of them to become artists in the future or help them on that path. Do you have any words of advice you'd like to give young artists, aspiring artists, maybe a starting point for someone who's interested in art but hasn't gotten experience yet or wants to start trying? Yeah, um, you know, and just like in every discipline, uh, the practice makes the master. So you got to start somewhere. 
um, just maybe drawing, drawing a home. The easiest way is to, to draw on, on a sketch pad. Um, I was taught th th uh, this when I, my first uh, drawing class was like, anything that you can make a mark with on a sand with your finger or maybe it's a needle or any stick on the mud or in any surface, that's called drawing. You can draw on paper, that's the easiest way. And drawing is the basic of painting. Mm -hmm. Then you start painting, there's watercolors, there's lots of stuff on 99 cents, on uh, on Ross, on a lot. There's a lot of art supplies here that you, with $20 you can buy a kit and start painting. And um, I start painting by my own. I took classes later, later in life when I had the chance, but I already knew how to draw. And I did it by myself because I became independent at 12 years old. Got to, to study, I had to move into the city and I left my family behind. I became independent. So um, you have to have uh, the desire to do it. And then if you like it, you should keep going. Uh, well, um, you can just start by drawing, but later on you can experience other uh, mediums, sort of disciplines like theater, like uh, uh, photography, like a sculpture. I even study architecture for a little bit mm. to, 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 to learn about perspective because they rarely teach about perspective on painting or on drawing. So I went into, into, uh, into two semesters of uh, architecture to learn exactly where the light falls on the buildings and, and perspective and all the stuff, you know, just you have to be curious and you have to um, con continue that curiosity in art. Art is, is this perfect medium to express yourself without violence. Right. That's, that was great advice to hear. And I think you're a testament to yourself that you don't, to be an artist, you can start anywhere. Like you had said, like you didn't start with an education in art, how you said drawing with the leaves and um, in your hometown and with the scenery and stuff, you know, that came just from your curiosity and your desire. And even though, you know, someone might not be educated in art or start with classes or things like that, that starting anywhere is good. And then you can start late like you did, like taking the classes afterwards after having started and seeing how far you've come right now, still being able to have this as a career is super inspiring. And knowing that not only at Poly High School, this mural is going to be a beautiful thing, but also that it'll be like the kids will be so lucky to participate in this and learn from you and have such a great experience that it will be meaningful in visually and um, overall as well. It's awesome to hear. Thank you so much for um, coming in today. That wraps up the questions I have. I'm so glad I got to talk to you and this has been an awesome conversation. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you.